Beach FM, locals talking to locals. And we welcome to our program this morning, Kapiti Mayor Guru. Kia ora, Guru. Kia ora, man. Good morning, listeners. Talking about child care centres, I see you're a bit concerned about the closure of our Otaki Health Camp. Yeah, um, that came a bit of a shock. Um, this is a government that is looking at uh, child poverty as a number one priority, I think. Um, and then for us to hear that they are dropping um, uh, investment of $3 million a year, leading to the closure of two centres, one in central Otago, or Roxburgh, and here our own Otaki um, Health Camp. Um, I, I know that the um, uh, future of the Otaki Health Camp was in abeyance given that the, the service provider, the Spain, had bought a property at Milne Drive. Yes. I remember the fracas over there. And that had gone to uh, the High Court and then to the Appeals Court and the local residents lost. And so um, the impression was that the operation from Otaki Health Camp would be moved over to Parapurumo Central and the uh, servicing of about 300 children per year would go ahead. Then suddenly we hear the whole service is going, not going to happen. No, and there's nothing much we can do about it, is it? Because it's a business, standalone business, but I suppose you can only put an objection to it. No, no, no. I mean, this is, they operate from funding that they get. This is not a private establishment as such. It's, this is a service provider. And therefore, you know, they needed, uh, the Ministry of Children is telling them um, the minister told me they cannot find uh, $3 million. Um, Which is not uh, a great deal of money in the, in the, uh, when you say it for the uh, yes, uh, help of our yes, children. Yes, unless it's signalling to us that they are tightening everything. Yeah. Um, but um, I spoke to Tim Cardigan, the mayor of uh, um, Central Otago there, and, and he's keen on getting some of the other mayors because that's a huge area like... Um, uh, Stan's operational area for based in Otaki Health Camp is actually the lower North Island. Yes. So we've got a number of um, um, uh, communities affected right across. So he's working towards getting in touch with all the mayors to see an appeal can be made, a joint appeal can be made to the minister. Okay. Now, talking about appeals and supporting each other, are you going to help out to try and get this Otaki to North Levin Expressway going? Are you going to send a letter to the Minister of Transport? Well, um, I'm wanting to have a chat with the, um, with the, with the NZT for a start to see exactly what's going to happen. Uh, uh, they have previously signalled that the work will go ahead, but I think we are looking at a situation where it may be going ahead in terms of getting the designation sorted out, yep. but not necessarily the actual construction. So I, we don't know. Okay. No, I just thought you might be sending a, a letter of support. Not a, not a bad idea to sort of sort that out because for us, we need the link um, because they'll draw the northern catchment into Kapiti. Yes. Just as we have uh, the um, Par- uh, Porirua catchment also been drawn to us. Um, over here, so uh, that's a useful link to have. Right. Now, talking about hot of an hour, I see they're asking the community to have your say on tackling waste because their landfill is getting pretty uh, chocker, and that's where we send a lot of our stuff. So we've really, I mentioned this to you about two or three weeks ago. So the council here has got to have a serious thought about where our rubbish goes. No, we, we've got an ongoing contract uh, license. Yeah, I mean, the Hokio, uh, look. We deal with the private companies, right? Where they take the rubbish to is their business. Right. You know, they decide where the, where the business, where they take the rubbish to. As long as we know that under the RMA, that the rubbish that they take to must be disposed of in a consented landfill. And in Horofenua, uh, then is Horizons is the regional authority down there, which is the consenting authority. They have to say whether the uh, Hokio landfill where I understand our rubbish goes to is compliant or not. Okay. So it's not the council's interest to find out just exactly where what might happen? No, no, no. I think we are interested, but we've got to um, talk to the people who are in charge of the consenting. If they say it is not um, compliant, then we, have, you know, then we have something to say to our contractors. Right. That our rubbish shouldn't be taken there. But having said that, EV are making a very strong... Um, because the local EV down there in Hope, in 11, um, they are linked to Nati Rawakawa, which is our southern 
uh, northernmost uh, EV in our um, district boundaries. So they are starting to make some noise, and I think uh, I'm expecting a submission in in the long-term plan to highlight this area. Um, the thrust of the submission, I understand, would be, yes, um, they, there may be a ongoing contract with them, but um, the contract ends and we are in a long-term plan, so we should be thinking long-term what we need to do, which is a fair statement to have, and, and that's an argument or debate that needs to be done through the long-term plan process. Okay. Good to go. I had an email in from a, a listener. He says uh, about the rates. He got a letter. I presume all right. ratepayers got a letter, didn't they, from the council? Right. He just says, what a confusing document I received to advise of the new rating for our property. Firstly, a rate rise per annum is advised, but not the effect per annum. Then it's effect per week. Then the rates increase breakdown, not reference monthly, weekly or yearly. Have to assume annual. Then the capital value and land value of the property, but no reference to which is applicable to rating value. Then to the change to the total effect to rates district-wide, but no reference that has on individual properties. Then an average rates increase of 4.7% for the 2018-19, whatever that means. Well, that's pretty straightforward. And I work out my increase on this notice myself. How can my maths indicate an increase of 7.8%? Is this deliberate? Well, I don't get a rates letter now, so I'm a little bit confused by it. But is he just a little bit misunderstanding of what's been put in that letter? No, I think because we are undergoing a number of changes, right, I mean, one of the biggest changes has happened is to the valuation, um, increase in valuation. You know, places like um, uh, Waikanae Beach had a 55% increase in valuation, and that means our rating system now is under um, under stress. So um, we have 21,000 residential properties in the district now under the new valuation uh, if we continue with the same rating system, that they have to un- undertake another additional $1 million of rates between them. So what's happened is in the non-residential property areas, because of the increase in valuation of residential properties, the valuation, the rating will go down in the non-residential areas by about a million, and the, and the, and the 21,000 residential properties will see the share of the rating uh, go up by one million, and then that's redistributed according to the, um, your land values. So that's happened. So um, we are proposing to try and level that off because if we don't, um, at present under the current rating system, we are looking at about 78% of our residential rate payers rates going up. Whereas the commercial rate pays and rural rate pays, they will be going down by 91% and 95% of, of rural rate payers and commercial rate payers. So h- how do we sort of manage that? So we are proposing two, two changes to try and level that off. We are trying to take out, um, we are proposing to take 7.6 million of the district-wide roading contributions, uh, changing from a fixed charge to a relative charge to the property's capital value. Okay, so that shifts that. And on top of that, we are taking about five hundred thousand dollars of economic development funding, which is normally we from the district wide general rate to target a commercial rating. So that takes um, some amount off. So um, the net effect of that is f- um, f- the increase in ratings in the residential rate payers among the residential rate payers up fifty seven percent of the rate payers will feel an increase whereas previously 78% will, will be having an increase. But having said that, um, depending on where you are and what your rating value is, uh, our average is 4.7 this um, in this coming year, and then 4.8 for subsequent years. So um, that's just the average, but it will fluctuate. Um, some people may be having um, 10%. Ah. But on average, we have, I think it's, uh, we've managed to hold it down. Yeah. So this gentleman's maths might be right, 7.8 per 6% for his... Yeah, I think individual cases and all that. I mean, the best that you, you can actually go to, we've got a um, uh, online, you can look at your rates impacts, you know, if you go into council's uh, website yes. and you look under stroke proposed rates uh, and you can log into your individual one and see how it is. Okay, right. So that was a letter. But from no, him. I would encourage the person to actually, you know, put in a submission and yes. and then come and see us, and then we can discuss that around the table.
That'd be good. All right. So I hope he might be listening. If not, I'll reply to his email, which came in last week, and I couldn't get a hold of you to have a little chat, but that was beside yeah, and, the point. And, you know, if, if he's feeling aggrieved, um, I can hook up one of the individual um, officials from the rating department to actually go through it for him. Oh, that'd be great. That's good. All right. Um, another little query here, and uh, you might not be able to answer this now, but a listener wanted to know when the flooding issues in Nathan Avenue are going to be rectified. Oh, I think the Nathan Avenue one is... Um, yeah, I think the stormwater works down there is priority number one. I ah. think that's where we are. Yes. Um, so of all the works down there, I think that's the first one that will go off the block. Right, good as gold. But I can't tell you exactly like when it will no, be back. No, that's fair enough. And just to finish off with, uh, you um, convened that d- drug community for um, a meeting for P, and that was a very yeah. successful forum. I haven't spoken to you since then, but um, any further outcomes on that? Yeah, um, um, last week I had um, sat down in a chat with uh, the Kapibana area commander, um, Tracy, and we had a really good chat, and I think we are looking towards, um, I'll be contacting all those people uh, and looking at forming a safety group, which will include, um, you know, community patrols, neighborhood support group, um, our the, the, the police, and also the civil emergency side, and some of the organizations were there, like Women Against Violence, and those groups. so we need to form something of that sort, and including the P group. Uh, because, I mean, what came out from that was that uh, it is not a, s- a single silver bullet. Uh, the safety issue has got a number of factors around it, um, and therefore we need a much more holistic look at it. Yep. All right, then, Guru, we well, thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man this week, so um, uh, your deputy mayor, he did a reasonably good job. Just don't give him a pay rise, that's all. <laughs> okay, thanks. No, he, he, uh, the last time I gave him a pay rise, he's the one that voted against it. Oh, good. <laughs> Got more of those councillors, I think. Thanks, Guru. <laughs> Have a good one. Yes, mate. Good day. That's uh, Cabinet Mayor Guru here on Beach FM. Back on deck this week. 106.3 Beach FM.